What's up, Sports Spectrum? I'm Annabelle Hasselbeck. So excited to welcome on two very impressive young men. 2022 MLB number one overall draft pick in Baltimore Oriole, Jackson Holiday, and his younger brother, also baseball stud, Ethan Holiday. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Woo! Okay, so Jackson, you just came from a game. Like, how many minutes ago? Yeah, um, luckily, or I wasn't playing. I was backing up, or... I was just watching. So in spring training, you don't play. You don't play every game. So just about about an hour ago, I was uh, at the field and then went and grabbed some dinner and brought it over here. So fresh out of uh, out of the out of the field. What was the dinner spot of choice tonight? Uh, a place called Kojo. It's like a, I guess Japanese steakhouse kind of thing. It's a pretty good spot down here in Sarasota. Love it. And Ethan, were you there to watch the game or were you watching it at home? No, we didn't get to go tonight. We were. We got here like we left Dallas at four a.m. this morning. We got here at like nine, and then we just hung out all day. Though, so we knew he wasn't gonna play. So we just hung chill, out. Chill day. Yeah, chill day. We got some sun, so it's good. Good sun's always good. We were just we were just um, outside for our first outside practices for BC lacrosse, and the uh-huh. sun finally hit me, and I I don't have the skin <laughs> that tans, so I'm, I'm getting my sunscreen on already. Oh, that's good. Great. Okay, well, Jackson, I have to start. Congratulations. You're recently married to your yep. beautiful wife, Chloe. Mm-hmm. How, how was that? How was the wedding? It was awesome. It was, it was really beautiful. Um, we planned on doing it outside, but the, the rain caused us to go inside, but it was still, it was, it was pretty unbelievable. Um, they did a great job with, with everything, and I think it turned out about as, out about as well as you could plan, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, Ethan? What was your favorite part about the wedding? Uh, I don't know. The whole thing was pretty incredible. Just seeing all our friends and then the big day was awesome. But I don't know. It was, it was all pretty incredible. Probably dancing. Yeah, I danced the whole time. What's your go-to move? Uh, I don't know. It was, kind of, it was kind of a mix. It was kind of just freestyle, honestly. I, was, I probably hurt my back a few times. <laughs> like, I'm probably a little too big to be doing some of the moves I was doing. But yeah. it, it, was, it was great. It was great. Hey, if you're going to hurt your back, you might as well hurt your back dancing at your brother's wedding. Exactly. exactly. Like, that's, that's the best part. story you could tell. I like exactly. that. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Jackson, can you give a little brief story about how you met your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we moved to Oklahoma uh, my freshman year of high school. And so Chloe and uh, my cousin Olivia were pretty good friends. So I, I had known Chloe. And I kind of started talking that, that summer. And then... Um, once the school year rolled around, when we were sophomores in high school, we just kind of started hanging out um, almost every day and started dating, and here we are now. So pretty, pretty easy, easy meetup. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But uh, yeah, my cousin kind of hooked everything up a little bit. Yeah. Well, props to your cousin. Yeah. No kidding. I've, did she have a speech at the wedding? No, no, just Ethan. Yeah, I had a speech. I had a speech. Oh, was, Ethan. Was, was okay, Ethan. Solid. Can you can you give us an elevator pitch of your speech? Uh, I mean, basically, I was, I was so out. nervous. Like, I was shaking, sweating. <laughs> I don't even know why, because I knew every single person in the room. But it's like, a big just, moment. Yeah, and I've never really spoke in front of people before. But I was basically just like, I love you guys. Like, I look up to you. It was simple. It was nice. It was good. Mm, that's awesome. Well, Jackson, I have one more question just about your relationship. And you're how old? 20? Mm-hmm. 20. You're 20. I'm 22, just to put that in context. And you're married, right? And so I can imagine that there are a lot of maybe people who are like, what are you doing? Or maybe there was some like, you know, backlash in a way, or, because it's pretty countercultural to what we're seeing right now, right? There's a lot of people I even know, I'm a senior in college, and I'm you know, we're talking about the life that I want for myself and what other people want. It's, you know, I want to be single and I want to go do this. And it's just, it's not what the world would say. And so Mm -hmm. how would you, how did you handle that? How did did you experience any of that? Um, Because I think it's a really amazing thing and a really bold thing. And so could you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, obviously people on social media like to, like to say certain things, but I mean, my parents were married at at 20 and 21 and I know I know quite a bit of people you'd be surprised that are in professional sports, especially baseball, because that's the world that that we live in. Is you'd be surprised at how many people actually get married at, at twenty and twenty two or around that age, because it's it's a hard life. I mean, 
it's 162 games plus spring training that that you're constantly moving and um, just to be able to to have that person with you it's 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 amazing and uh, to not be able to do long distance and just to have her here it makes everything a whole lot easier especially with with the sport we play mm. well that's so cool so so cool well we're going to talk more baseball and family and faith in a little bit but i want to get to know the two brothers a little bit more so we're going to do a little game of what's his fill in the blank okay for you guys to know each other are you ready okay. all right <laughs> jackson what's ethan's favorite restaurant restaurant oh man it goes to sonic a lot oh, oh my gosh <laughs> sonic late night sonic trips i don't know um that's probably like fast food. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Honestly. Fast food counts. Like, that's a yeah, restaurant. I think that's a good one. I, mean, I don't even know. Good, okay. Yeah. Even Brahms. you think that was good? That was right? I mean, I eat Chipotle like every single day. So like. Yeah, <laughs> when I was home, he was going to Brahms a lot. So we'll just. There's not a lot. Right. To, not a lot we'll of give it to you. We'll give it to you. Yes, okay, Ethan. Sure Ethan, for you, what's something Jackson always has on him or wears? Oh, he always has a backwards hat on, like a hat just like this. Always, you'll never catch him without it. Yeah, the yeah, wind, video proof. The wind causes <laughs> he him always problems. has it. That's good. Okay, Jackson, next one. What's Ethan's go-to music? Oh man, Ethan's all over the map when it comes to music. So that one's a bit difficult because, like, you can catch him in a in a reggae mood or or some rap or like need to breathe, go to the Christian route. He just kind of, he bounces around. Very rarely country. So I go, I go probably reggae and a little bit of rap. Okay. I like it. Ethan, last question for both of you. What sport would Jackson play if not baseball? Uh, he played varsity basketball, but I think golf would be his choice. Yeah, I would try to be a professional golfer. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty solid. He's got a good swing. Ethan, if you could choose, what sport would you play other than baseball? Uh, I wish I would have been a better quarterback. I could throw the ball. I just, I didn't know. I I trouble with the plays. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I started playing super late because we were traveling so much. Like, it was in that time where, like, you couldn't, I don't know. We were traveling so much. I couldn't really, like, start when I was young. But... He could probably throw the ball a little bit better than the Oklahoma State quarterback last year. So, he can wow. really throw a football. It's just... Not a lot. I could probably get some tips from your dad or something. Maybe, maybe. Well, hey, you never know. You never family yeah. vacation. You can pull out the other sports. Yeah, and crush yeah. it. Love yeah. it. Well, something that I know is true of both of you guys is that you're both under very high pressure and high expectations, right? And so, a question I would ask you guys is, you know, I even struggle with this with my lacrosse team because I'm playing lacrosse every single day. How do you remain and, and keep the fun and the joy of your sport when you are just absolutely grinding every day and you're under just a really intense um, training regimen? Yeah, I'll, I'll go because uh, I feel like in the past few years I've had, to, I've had to deal with that. And I feel like I've, I mean, not to brag, but I feel like I've done a pretty decent job. Um, I think being able to have your faith and be able to just kind of realize that that everything is a plan and, and god has a plan for you i think that's that makes it pretty easy for me honestly like okay i'm gonna go out here and i'm gonna compete and i'm gonna do everything in my ability to succeed but at the end of the day like if i do fail there's, there's a purpose for that so i think that's something that that i've learned and i think also being able to have chloe and being able to have my teammates at the field and um, i'm lucky enough to the Orioles have a, a bunch of really good people in our organization that are fun and make the game fun and make it fun to be able to go to to practice or go to the field and and no matter what happened the day before you have something to to look forward to and and, and the people that you're surrounded with. That's awesome. And Ethan, for you, how would you how do you feel like you find the the playful attitude and the fun mm -hmm. in baseball still? Um, I mean. You have a lot of people looking at you. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of eyes. Um, if he's my teammates or people watching me, like, outside of the, like, fences, like, I think that's something that helps me is thinking I have an audience of one, and I'm doing it for the Lord, and he's truly all that matters in my life. And if I fail, if I succeed, I mean, it's under his, I mean, it's under his power, and 
I just I think of that every time it's it's going down a, a downward spiral. So that's mm -hmm. something I think about. You guys are good. You guys are giving me like a pump up speech as like my own <laughs> in my own athletic season. I'm like midway through my lacrosse season. That's exactly <laughs> what I need to hear. So thank you for that. That was so good. Know. But Ethan, you touched on it a little bit, just like all eyes are on you, right? And mm -hmm. my dad played professional football for many years and I never played football, but I did grow up with having that kind of like pressure and expectations of having some high performance athletic moments, right? Mm -hmm. And so your guys' dad also played professional baseball and that is incredible in itself. Growing up, did you ever feel like you had like a target on your back when you would go into, you know, youth games or mm -hmm. even um, games to follow? Did you ever feel like that was there, that pressure existed with that? For sure. I mean, even this past weekend, we played in a big game against a big school in Texas and you walk in and you're already hearing the noise, like people are already saying your name, like they're already trying to get in your head. But I mean, it's it started, I mean, I can't even remember the first time I heard that stuff. It's been, I was probably five or six years old in St. Louis and you got little kids, even parents saying stuff and it's just something I've gotten used to and it's uh, it's definitely molded me into being a better person and just kind of not taking things too serious and just playing for Ronnie Savon, like I said. Mm -hmm. Jackson, have you have you had any experience with you know feeling like you need to meet a certain expectation or um, just feeling like people are more so out to get you right? Like I can imagine when someone strikes out Jackson Holiday, they're like, "Oh yeah, like that's the thing I'm telling my grandkids, right?" Like, how, do you ever feel like that's something that you think about or maybe did think about growing up? Yeah, I mean, there's always always a target, right? I mean, if you put yourself in a, in a good position, um, like like Ethan has in, in high school, being the number one player, and like I've been fortunate to to be able to be the first pick and and have that number one prospect thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you feel that you feel the the I mean, the competitiveness that the pitcher wants to get you out. But it's 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 fun. Like that's the position that everyone dreams to be in, right? You want to be you want to be considered the best, right? So people want to compete and beat you because I think it's it brings out another of a level of competitiveness and um, and it's it's pretty funny certain certain like experiences that you have with fans and and stuff like that. It always it always kind of drives you and you're like, okay, like at least this guy's like he's thinking about that. Like I've mm -hmm. I've already got what I want. Like I'm mm -hmm. I'm already beating you and you're you're mm -hmm. thinking about me and I don't. I don't really know who you are. So it's mm -hmm. kind of that mindset of like, it's, it's a competitive mindset that, that you have to have whenever you have that certain expectation. But uh, I mean, pressure is a privilege, right? I mean, if you're mm -hmm. any sort of pressure, you must be, must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Pressure is a privilege. I'm going to, I'm going to tagline these. I might be saying these around you guys and be like, I said that to her. <laughs> That's <laughs> why she's good. saying that. I said that to her. Passing <laughs> yeah. on. That's so good. Well, tell me a little bit more about the dynamic between you guys and your dad. My dad, he played football, but did not play lacrosse. So he's more of like a cheerleader and more of like that athletic side. Um, when he's trying to coach me up, right? Um, that's kind of been my experience with that. But is your dad, you know, coaches you guys up hard on you guys, easy on you guys, more cheerleader? Is it super competitive? Maybe you're doing a family wiffle game, wiffle ball game. What's the dynamic like there? Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's different for both of us. I feel like um, me and my dad are pretty laid back and pretty pretty simple. And we do have, like, competitive and, and certain, like, training. Like, we do, like, a certain type of, of batting practice where he tries to get me out and I'm trying to get a hit against him. We're competitive or we're playing pickleball. It's competitive. But it's, it's a pretty easy dynamic. Um, not a whole lot of arguing or... or getting after each other is it's more of like fun playful competitiveness mm. but it doesn't <laughs> seem like it's that for ethan <laughs> no i mean it it's is not like a bad thing but it like, is for it's, it's a little bit more heated that's like okay. i think i was i was born with a little more i don't know what the word is like a little more fiery like i'm a little fiery sometimes like me and my dad we get along we're best friends like we get along super well but i mean he's really competitive and I'm really competitive and we've gotten into some pickleball matches 
Like if we if we're not thinking the same thing when we're hitting, like it's it gets a little chippy. But I mean, as we've gotten older, it's it's definitely gotten more chill. Good brings out the best in you. For sure, yeah. No, he's, That's awesome. He's helped me a lot. That's so good. Well, this is the Sports Spectrum podcast. It's the inter- intersection of sports and faith. So what's a daily or maybe weekly discipline that either of you do um, to plug into your faith? Is it, it could be a devotional, it could be quiet time, it could be worship music in the car, maybe a Bible study that you attend. Um, what's something that you guys have really invested in your life? Yeah, we have, we have Bible study at the field um, once a week. And then lately they've been having a, another one um, outside the field. Um, but yeah, I mean, being able to listen to music and, I know something that, that I do is kind of my routine is I, I always pray during the national anthem and then every time I go to, to the plate. So I think that's something that, that keeps me grounded and, and knowing that that's like I'm not here with without the Lord and not in this position without the Lord. So I think those are easy things for me to do. Um, I know the life can, can get really, really fast and um, sometimes you can lose that focus. But just to be able to keep myself grounded each and every day because I know that that the one thing I'll be doing is, is playing baseball and being able to just sit back and, and relax and be able to, to lean on the Lord in, in that department. It makes, makes the game a whole lot easier. And then, yeah, having, having Bible study once a week at the field, um, I think it's major league chapel is, um, they do, they do a good job of having good programs and, and a good uh, system to follow. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. And you said you're saying on the field. Like, do you mean I'm actually in the stadium or I'm at a practice field? Oh yeah, yeah. As I'm going up to hit before every at bat. So, yep. That's awesome. Super cool. And now when I'm watching you, I'll be thinking of that. Yeah, you'll oh, know. know what he's doing you'll right know. now. <laughs> That's right. That's good, Ethan. What would it be for you? Um, I think just every day praying to the Lord very intimately. Like, I mean, I'm shutting everything off quiet and it's just me and the lord every day once or twice a day um listen to prison worship music um i love music like jackson was saying and uh i pray pray for my team every game so i take them down the line we pray in a circle um that's before every single game and then obviously and i do the national anthem prayer for national anthem and it's just little things like that like i've i try to do the same thing every game and every day but um yeah, just staying on it. I like to talk to my teammates about the Lord. Um, anytime I can get a chance to talk to my teammates about the Lord, I do. And it's it's really cool. It's, it's cool what's going on with the younger generation. And I'm really excited to see what happens. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I really love what you said there about any chance that you can. You're talking to, talking to your teammates about um, talking about the Lord. And that's something that even with me throughout my four years with – my Boston College lacrosse team, that's been something that I saw my my faith was so shy my freshman year. Yeah, my no doubt. Year. And then it really took like for me to hit this low in my athletic career where I realized, no, no, my identity is not in my sport. Yeah. So I had to go to our, our FCA, our Athletes in Action at BC, like every week. I had to be listening to worship music the moment I got off the field. I had to be calling my grandma like, give me the wisdom, you know? And it was in that season of my life where I felt so much bolder in my faith because I could go to my teammates and say, no, no, I'm going to this meeting tonight. And it's not, it's not me just going to say, I'm going to do my homework. I'm actually going to a Christian athlete Bible study. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was bolder to talk about my faith because I I was like, I need this. I'm getting through the week because of this. Yeah. And so I think that's really awesome. And I guess I would just ask what, like, what encouragement or advice can you give to someone who's maybe in more of a shy season of their life and, you mm-hmm. know, in that locker room where they might be the only believer? Like, yeah. what advice would you give them to be bolder in their faith? Um, I think praying about it, honestly, like, I have I have been shy about it in the past. Um, and some days I'm just like, like I get distracted by everything else that's going on. I don't even, I don't even, I guess, think about it. And at the end of the day, I feel very regretful. And but I think just being bold and realizing the Lord is the centerpiece in your life, and you can say one thing and change that person's day, month, or even life. And I think that's something that you just need to reach out and talk to your, to your teammates about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think personally, something that I've noticed is the way that you act will, will, will draw people towards you. And I think 
I've noticed with with a few of my teammates is guys are a lot more curious than they might put out. Like they might think, oh, like not kind of Bible study, but then if you start talking to them, they're most of the people that I've been around are are actually interested and they want to know. They just don't know where to start. So I think being able to to help guys out and and where to start and invite them to Bible study and keep inviting them and invite them to church and just little things. And I think as as Christians, we we if we carry ourselves in a certain demeanor and and love on people, it'll it'll draw draw them near. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, and it's probably so evident the way that you guys live your lives. So keep doing it, keep going. So something, a question that I get asked a lot, um, if I'm doing an interview, is, "Oh, you come from a sports family? Like, you it must have been you have to play sports, you have to play sports, you have to play sports, like forced down your throat." And I, I'm like, no, that's just not the case. My parents just gave us the the opportunity to play soccer, play basketball, do swimming, do lacrosse. Um, but it was never something that was forced upon us. And so I wonder with you guys, another sports family, I actually saw a video on my TikTok. I swear my phone is listening to me because I was like, oh, like I, I'm, maybe they, I don't know, maybe I was talking about, oh, I'm interviewing um, these two guys. And then I saw this video of your home with your baseball, like setup and facility, and it's sick. And I was like, this is so crazy. My phone is definitely listening to me because now this video is popping up. But I want to ask you about that because some people might have seen that video and maybe thought something similar. Sports family, I bet you it's baseball live or die. Like, is that the truth? Was baseball always, you have to play baseball and that's it. What was your experience with that? Yeah, no. Um, I mean, we grew up going to the field, me and Ethan, um, kind of always around baseball. And I think it honestly just, that's what we've wanted to do ever since. I know personally, ever since I can remember. And I always loved playing other sports and playing basketball and playing soccer. I mean, I played I played all of them. I knew ever since I was little and growing up in the clubhouse, like that's that's where I wanted to be. And and the whole new facility, that's all, that's all new. That was that's been built in the last three or four years. So it's, it's all new, but we definitely grew up playing other sports and, and doing other things outside of baseball. And, um, but yeah, I know me personally, just watching my dad and, and wanting to be like him as a little kid has kind of molded me into this is what I want to do with my life. And I'm lucky enough to be able to be doing it right now. Mm -hmm. I yeah, can imagine. Not... Oh, sorry, you go. Oh, you're you not go No, you go. No, I was just saying it's the same thing. I mean, we were never forced to. My mom always was like, "Hey, like if you guys don't want to do this, please don't feel like you have to. Like this game is not just because your dad did it does not mean this has to be y'all's game. This doesn't mean mm-hmm. you have to do your thing you do in your life." But um, yeah, we just we grew up around it and we both fell in love with it, and now we're pretty good at it. So love it. That's it. Those are two big pluses. Yeah. I like it. Well, you guys both play baseball, right? So I can imagine that you're home or it's the off season and you guys are playing together. Do you have a certain drill or I don't know exactly what you would call it in baseball, but Mallory and I do like stick work. And so we'll do like behind the back, um, like offside catching. And we have certain drills, Mallory, my sister, that we just as sisters have always done for years together. Do you guys have a certain, okay, we're going outside, we're going in the backyard, we're doing this. I mean, not really. We we hit together. Um, like during the off season, we'd hit together. But like just competing, like I guess that with my dad, we'd do like the mixed VP where he tries to get us out, and we're trying to beat him, or or I'm trying this. to I'm trying to beat Ethan, and and he's trying to beat me. So I think those are those are probably the ways that that we compete. But we always we always just hit, and yeah, there's nothing nothing too special besides just hitting together. And, taking ground balls. Mm-hmm. Um, back to your faith. Jackson, you mentioned it a little bit about, what was it, chapel on the field, I think you said? Yeah, we just have chapel in, in the clubhouse. Yeah, Chapel in the clubhouse. And so when you're away from home, I can imagine that that has been um, a really strong faith um, stronghold for you. Has there been a long, you know, however long you've been away from home so far, a spiritual leader who you've really looked up to um, in your time away from your family? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's like a, a distinct one besides me and my parents, but uh, just, just the guys that, that I get to spend time with and just really like talking with them. And I've had a, a few really good teammates and, 
and a few really good coaches that have been um, very passionate about their faith and, and, and know, know more and I'm able to, to learn from, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice to have. Cause I mean, in the minor leagues, you play every Sunday, so you're not able to go to church and then Mondays are off, but just to be able to, to have that community and, um, and yeah, my teammates are, are awesome. So I'm very grateful for them. Mm-hmm. And Ethan, can you tell me a little bit about the college ministry that goes on at your house? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So my mom and dad, they, uh, they have a couple of friends also that help them with food and they talk sometimes, but pretty much any, any college kid that wants to come to Bible study on Sunday nights is welcome. And, uh, I invite my, my whole high school team, a couple of them come and the numbers grow every week. But yeah, so it started a couple years ago. It's so much fun. So it started out as like a athletes and then it's kind of uh, merged into like a few sorority and um yeah, but mainly mainly athletes. Mm-hmm. Uh, besides like a few that um have like brought friends and mm-hmm. they've just kept coming. So. It's it's a really cool. Like we there's a couple of people that have become like family to us and we had one one girl she moved in to our our barn and she's like a sister to me now. She's like my best friend and it's really cool like what the Lord will do and it's it's really it was really awesome. It's really awesome what goes on. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And just awesome that you get to be so closely a part of it, Mm -hmm. right? Like, and that's something that you'll take with you wherever you go when you're not home. So that's really cool. Um, Well, that was just amazing for me to hear. I want to ask you guys about your pregame rituals or routines, because I know this is kind of like a thing in baseball. Do you, do either of you have any very hardcore, I have to do this before every game? Um, I used to wear two socks, like a like an ankle sock, and then put my baseball socks on. But I don't, I don't do that anymore. When uh, was that? That was last year in high school. But I mean, I don't. I'm done with the superstitious things. So I just, I have a very um, simple cage routine for games. I just tell the coach to try to get me out, or I hit off the machine as hard as it goes. So it's. It's pretty simple. Kind of gets me locked in and uh, get to, to get to compete a little bit before the game. And um, but yeah, pretty pretty simple. I like it. Ethan. What about you? Um, I have to have something in my left back pocket. So like in baseball, you wear these base these pants. They have pockets. That's weird. And I don't know. It started like a couple of years ago. I always had to have something in my left pocket. Like, what do you carry? Like what? Batting gloves or like a sliding mitt or. Like I, I, I wear chapstick. Like my lips are super sensitive for some reason, and I have to have chapstick too. Like it's it's weird, but other than that, I don't, I don't really have any. No. That's a good thing to have on you. Yeah, no, it's huge. I, I, Especially in the I, sun. Yeah, <laughs> they're weird. Hey, maybe maybe a sponsorship could be a chapstick. That, that would be always huge. Have. We talked about that. I think today Kobe Mayo has chapstick always and so it's like maybe you should get sponsored no, like, oh, that'd be huge I need it's not a bad idea like no. aquafor has got a lot of products then you got oh, everything I have, under I have aquafor. aquafor in there yeah it's in the room <laughs> hey here's your plug i said it first <laughs> you can send me that like friend package you know yeah, no, no, I got you. <laughs> whatever it is um all right well my last question for you guys tonight i am going to be doing some reporting and interviews for boston college baseball and if I get the opportunity to get at bat and swing, I need help. Okay. Okay. Give me, I need one tip from each of you so that I don't completely embarrass myself. Um, well, I mean, you play lacrosse, so that'll help. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> um, just try to hit whoever's pitching. Just try to hit them. I think yep. hit them with a line drive. Okay. It's the simplest advice you can give anybody. Or you got to swing hard and hope you hit it. Because I right. do that sometimes. So I got to <laughs> hope and I got to hit the pitcher. I got yeah, my two things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> H2, I love it. Well, Holiday Boys, this was incredible. It was so nice to talk to you. You guys have um, impacted me tonight through what you've spoken about your trust in God and playing for an audience of one. So I appreciate that for my own life and for all the people that are going to listen to this. Um, 
for as long as it's available on the internet. So you guys are the best. Thank you so much for doing this. We're cheering both of you on in your baseball endeavors. Um, and thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Woo! Hey, thanks for watching Sports Spectrum here on YouTube. You can click our next video or you can check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.